Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of My Perfect Purpose. A little bit about My Perfect Purpose. Our goal really is to connect the creation, which are people, back to the creator. And to really get, uh, which is God, and to really get a blueprint or um, know the actual plan that God has for our lives. So with some guests we're going to talk about the pursuit of purpose. With others, we will talk about um, just living on purpose. So today's guest is Keith Fitzhugh. And in 2010, I think December, uh, his face was everywhere. His story was everywhere. Anywhere from Oprah, Jay Leno, CNN, ESPN, New York Times, New York Post, and many, many more. So Keith, you decided to walk away from what... <laughs> people search for or you know their purpose what you felt was your purpose how do you walk away from purpose so first off I want to thank you for having me <laughs> you're welcome um, I feel like during that time frame God allowed me to fulfill that purpose and being in the NFL at that time um, so um, I started playing football at the age of eight and uh, being able to accomplish a lot of things um, that a lot of people in my family ne never had the opportunity to do. Nobody in my family ever played um, football, honestly. Uh, there was no collegiate athletes. Uh, my mom just took opportunity or took a chance with me playing football. Um, just to get us active as, as kids. And um, I was able to um, digest it fairly fast. I was fairly good at it. Um, being able to progress with the traveling team in Riverdale to um, being one of the top players in the state of Georgia um, and also in the country. Uh, being able to play in the SEC school, Mississippi State University, and, and ultimately fulfilling my ultimate goal of making it to the NFL. Um, you know, I went through some struggles, ups and downs with the NFL. Um, but the final time when I had been released, um, I feel like at that time frame, it was my third time being released. I feel like that was a completion. I've, I've been through it. I've had the opportunity to put my jersey on and have my last name on the back of a jersey and being able to step on the actual NFL field and uh, try to showcase my talents. So, um, once that the purpose was over, uh, the good Lord just had something great in store for me. Yeah. So with that being said, do you feel that that particular purpose led you into or taught you lessons that have sustained you in other areas that you're pursuing? Absolutely. I think um, the adversity standpoint, um, being able to take on leadership roles, um, being able to uh, go through some trying times. Um, when I was in college, I lost my sister. When I was at the age of 18, I'm not really understanding what life was really about. I'm um, yet 18 and seeing a young lady, my sister at the age of 13 pass away. Um, that was a very trying time for me and my family. And uh, me, me seeing how strong my mom was when she came to uh, Mississippi State during my spring game, I got to see you know, some very enjoyment, uh, exciting time for me, my very first spring game in college. Um, I was able to have an interception. Um, I think I played fairly well that day. And then a very trying time. Um, that evening my mom had told me my sister passed away. So um, and then throughout my tenure of playing football at Mississippi State, and then again, stepping on the field. I think those times have allowed me to uh, overcome some um, anxiety with me being unsure about myself, being able to be a, a true leader, um, believing in myself, and also relying on God and being my crutch or my supplier every need that I, I need to have. When sometimes me as a man, I don't feel like that I'm fulfilling um, my full purpose to be truthful. Um, me coming over to my career path now. 
Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you feel now that you are currently living your purpose or right now you're in pursuit of purpose? Um, I think I'm right on God's plan. Um, <laughs> I think that um, I don't think anybody could truly understand because we can't even fathom God's thoughts, but I feel like I'm on his, his the journey that he has for me. Um, everything that I've been through, it's been his purpose for me to go through these things. Um, I think that God is preparing me for something greater, of course. Um, but the things that I've saw in my early 20s and through my 20s and now I'm in my early to mid 30s now, um, it's allowed me to be on course, um, to be able to help other young men and women, uh, help build them up, um, help display leadership, um, help them build character. Um, I, I'm just excited to see what God has, has in store for me, um, to see what my next journey may be. But I feel like my, if you want to say this is my purpose right now, it is currently. Okay, so just helping to build the next generation and Correct. leadership and... Char building character, leadership, um, helping people find out who they really are. I think in today's society, it's very tough to figure out who you are. Um, because, you know, you look at different trendsetters and then people try to mirror their image to what they may idolize or what they may see with all the social media. So um, a lot of people tend to try to uh, live a certain lifestyle or try to say, well, I'm living like this and realistically not living in that purpose just yet. Yeah. Do you think they have really set down because who knows us better than our creator and he gave us like with um you have an iphone right yeah i mean they were created in the image of you know they were that was apple's dream and so they're stamped with that and so we're you know we're created in the image of god and he's our manufacturer he knows us he has the blueprint so this show is all about you know connecting back to that tapping back into that source because who knows it's better than the one that created us so how do you try to tap back into that source to really make sure you're staying on purpose so I think I, I have an amazing story I had a great opportunity to um, really go back to the manual which is the Bible yes. and really go back to the Creator uh, which is God. So, during my time of being released, I didn't know which way to go. I couldn't talk to my parents because they couldn't tell me. Um, I couldn't talk to my friends, loved ones, because they couldn't tell me. So, <laughs> I really buckled down and it was very tough for me to be truthful um, because I didn't know which way to go because it was so confusing. It was detrimental to me because I wasn't playing football. And I remember me praying to God always and just saying, Lord, just give me another chance to play football. And then I remember I would go to God and be praying to God and say, hey, God, if football is not for me, let me land a great career path. Mm -hmm. So I, I went to him and I would fast and I would pray and I would spend time with him. And that was the very, I think it was the lowest point of my life besides death yeah, that I've experienced with my 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 sister, my father, but besides death, that was the lowest point of my life, and that was the closest I feel like I've ever got to God, and when God allowed me to have the best of both worlds, that's what blew my mind, and just to give everybody a little bit He's more, a mind boy. <laughs> just to give everybody a little bit more understanding, so me praying for both, I prayed to play football again in the NFL, I prayed for a great job, um, working for the railroad and I was literally praying and asking God for these things specifically and then for me to have an opportunity to then have a great career I interviewed and I wasn't supposed to be the guy selected I had no work experience at all I was actually the second candidate the alt the alternate candidate but the first candidate didn't pass his drug test wow so they called me in for the position. And then 
a couple months down the road, I got called to go back to play football for the New York Jets. And I couldn't believe it. I remember, like yesterday, my dad got up. I was walking in the door. My dad was had the phone in his hand. And my dad was like, son, I got the Jets on the phone. And I was like, stop playing. <laughs> and he was like, um, the Jets are really on the phone. And I picked up the phone, spoke with the player personnel. They were looking to fly me out that day. And this is when it got real to me. It's because I tried to call my employer. And my employer didn't pick up the phone. So in reality, it was all about God then. So I didn't know what to do. Me being a young guy, early 20s, somebody saying, God, well, what to do? And you can't ask God then what to do because I pray for both. <laughs> he gave and me he, what and you he be gave, careful what you pray And for. he gave me both. He answer. And he did answer. Yeah. He gave me both. And um, that's when I realized I was the closest to God then. Because he gave me both things I asked for. I prayed for, prayed for both. He gave me my heart desires. And I had to choose. Yeah. And That's no, important for everybody listening out there. God hears you. True. God knows you. God loves you. I think it talks about in Luke, God knows. I mean, the number of hairs on your head are numbered. Like the creator of the universe cares for us that much. So whatever you're struggling with, whatever you're going through, God loves you. You're the apple of your of his eye. He knows you, knows you. You are his friend. You can go to him. And so with you experiencing that and he's presenting both of these things, like how mind blowing. Like how great was God? Like <laughs> It was amazing. I tell you, um with him providing both opportunities for me, then me having to choose. And everybody knows when you're any kid that's an athlete or a singer, or whatever you may be in, you want to be the biggest of all. You want the whole world to know you. And he didn't even use my actual talent <laughs> on the field. He utilized me just saying, no, I'm not going back to the NFL. And I took the career path of working in the railroad industry. And he made it to where... He showed me I didn't need you to play football mm. to show you how big I am. And I was on every major platform by following what I thought my purpose was, yeah. which was saying football is not complete. It's over with. Yeah. It's time for me to take a step in another direction, which is going in the rail industry. And it was the biggest time of any part of my career. Wow, after, after the football. football. After football. Like, God used you in such a major way. So, with all of the um, college students, they're graduating. It's a maze. So, they're getting out of college, um, and they're feeling down because um, maybe NFL teams haven't been contacting them. The draft is over. They didn't get drafted. What will you say to people that are saying, like, my purpose is over. Like, what's next for me? Football was everything to me. I would always tell them, your purpose is never over. It's all about getting in line with God, spending time with Him. Everybody deep down inside know what they want to do. I'm going to tell you, if that's what your heart desires, reach out to God. Don't share with everybody. Don't share with anybody. <laughs> you share with Him. And you talk with God only. And you walk your path, and he'll show you your path. And he'll give you the opportunities. He'll give you your heart desires. I'm not going to say it's going to happen within a day or a month. I tell you, when I was going through my tough time and praying and asking God for both. Felt like forever. It, was, <laughs> it, it took almost six months to happen. But it came true for me. So I never want everyone to think you need to, you need to give up. Your purpose is never over. That just wasn't in God's plan. God always has a plan for you. God always has a purpose for you. Just reach out to him if you feel like your plan has now been compromised. So it's all about connecting back to your source, which is God. Okay, so this is the last thing. So 
I have a game I like to play. Well, I'm going to start playing with everybody. It's called a moment to minister. So you pick a number between 1 and 55. And you tell the people your thoughts on it. Or a moment just to minister to people that might be going through. Or just need a word. So what's, uh, can you give a number? 1 through 55. 11. Okay. 11 is divorce. <laughs> I think this is a um, good topic. Me and Jessica, my wife, who's also um, interviewing me. Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, me and Jessica have been together for 12 years. Yeah, dating 12. It'll be married November. It'll be 10, 10 years. years. Wow. Um, I think in any relationship, you have your, your, your tough times. And anybody that's ever been with somebody this for a long period of time and you sit at a such young age um i think you go through some trying times yeah because you grow yeah you grow yeah you're not the same like um and i'm not the, i'm not the same cut up built guy <laughs> that i was in college and she's about the same size since college but i'm not that same person um my mindset's changed we've also had an addition to the family we have a wonderful son uh, Keith. hi little Keith. um he's six today and I think that um, it's been on our path before, a uh, divorce. Uh, me and Jessica have talked about it. Me and Jessica, just to be truthful, we've split and separated, separated for a while. For a while. And um, I tell you, um, when you go through some things, either by yourself, uh, it's a lot different <laughs> than when you have your partner in crime. Um, <laughs> they may get on your nerves sometimes. Um, it may not seem easy. I think one of the biggest things for me that I've learned is to talk to Jessica. Yeah, communication is It's important. key, very yeah. important. Um, me wanting to be the man of the house and taking on all the burdens and taking on all the stress, sometimes I wouldn't communicate that. Um, so I would just keep it to myself. And then me doing that it just make my mind wander and make me want to just venture out or go do whatever I want to do or not be at home and then it's it brings unnecessary grief into your household um, instead of me just communicating certain things yeah transparency just being Quick. just willing to be vulnerable yeah. with your partner just talking so married couples make sure that you're opening up and talking to each other. If you're feeling a certain way, let your partner know. No and, matter how they feel. Yeah, they're not mind readers. They don't know. No matter how you they You might feel. have an attitude about something. They might not even know what the attitude is about. Might not be aware. So make sure just to communicate. I think that's one of the key things that we learn through Everybody. separation. Yeah, marriage is not either easy. It's hard. But, I mean, mm -hmm. we decided that together is, I mean, we were better better absolutely and i think that somebody always feel like they gotta win in a relationship if it's an argument a disagreement who cooks better who runs faster <laughs> who i don't know um the kid looks like who like it doesn't <laughs> matter um in a sense it's all realistically about communication i'm not gonna say that you're not gonna still have disagreements yeah you you're are you're two bust, different people you're gonna bump yeah. heads they're going to yeah but at the end of the day you can't always win. Sometimes yeah. me, I have to be like, okay, it's your battle. You won that one. And then vice versa. It's yeah. your battle. Keep you won this one. But if you look at a thing from a holistic standpoint, your team. Yeah. And just keeping God first. Yeah, Doing it God's way. Like it's the best way. We can't. What's, what other way? There's no other way. Yeah. I realized like, oh, it's, and Jessica's a very pretty lady. Uh, oh, thank you. It's like, hey, for guys, it's like, oh, it's just a million pretty women out here. You got every social media platform. Yeah. Da, 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 da. It's like, what's the point? You got something already. You, what? She's going. She thinks Michael B. Jordan is the hottest <laughs> thing out here, but I don't think he looked better than me. The audience may feel differently, but at the end of the day, when you have your winner, you keep your winner. Um, and you work through it. You're gonna have your trying times, but yeah, if y'all can are. find a way to make it successful y'all can make it work together as a team y'all make it work especially if you have a family you have kids yeah look at the bigger picture yeah. yeah that's the key yeah god planned it you know a mother and a father raising a car 
raising a child and steering them in the way that the Lord would want them to, you know, go. Raising them in a godly household. So, um, we're going to end with uh, a prayer. So, you'd be um, happy to join in, Keith. So, I want to thank um, everyone for listening. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you, God, for this interview. God, I'm asking you to just touch my guest to get guest today just go with him lead him and guide him god surround him with your love god so let him know that he is love god put them on the path that you should have them to go god take your all our listeners today just bless them god fill their hearts with your love help them be led by your spirit god and we just thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you're gonna do you are great you are powerful you are mighty god And we just thank you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in to this interview. For more on Keith, please make sure to check out his New York Post interview. It's coming up. Um, It should be available shortly with the New York Post. So again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. And remember that we are flawed, but we are also perfect for the purpose that God has for us. Remember to subscribe and like. Thank you and have a blessed day.